Welcome to Bonnie's Beat. We're coming to you from Radnor Studio 21 in beautiful downtown Wayne. I'm your host, Bonnie Squires, and we like to bring you interesting people in the community who know about arts and culture and politics and education. And we've got somebody who just got off a plane from her trip to Paris and came right to the studio. Now, I think that's above and beyond. Our guest today is Patricia Maloney, who is the founder and the brains behind Travel for Teens. Hi, Pat. How are you doing? Hi, Bonnie. How are you? You don't know what time zone you're in, do you? No. Sometimes <laughs> in my job, it doesn't much matter. <laughs> now, you were forced to go to Paris, right? I was. It was, it was tough, but someone had to do it. I know. What a punishment. What Took did you do? What did you do that forced you to be punished and be sent to Paris? My favorite city in the world, by the way. Mine too. Um, well, we do research trips every year, you know, even though we go to Paris quite often. Um, we do update our research for each of the places that we're going. So I was doing some of that, and to be honest, I was just having a good time for the rest of the time. It's funny, the last time I was in Paris, it was a year and a half ago. I was not a teenager then, I have to assure you. I was. But we. <laughs> <laughs> But my husband and I were meeting friends after we had been in Tunisia, which is his native country. And my girlfriend and her significant other, they were staying at the Georges Sank, which is probably the most expensive hotel in Paris. But I had one of them, that's for sure. But I had done my research on the internet, and I found a beautiful little modern hotel. I've been modernized. That was like a half a block in from the Champs Elysees. And therefore, it was affordable by American standards, you know? Yes. But we did go to visit them at the Georges Sank. Oh, my goodness. The flower arrangements, the antique furniture and paintings. But even they said it, the restaurant was too expensive. They didn't eat there. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. I can understand. <laughs> yeah, so. You can spend a lot of money on food well, in Paris, Paris. But you don't have to. You don't have to, but Paris is very expensive. I mean... I guess it's because the dollar isn't worth anything there. I'm not quite sure. I'm not good about the finances, you know. I'm good about the words, and I speak French fluently, so that's always a joy. And we have friends in Paris, and you have dinner with different friends at restaurants, at their homes, so it's a treat. And museums, out of this world. Out of this world. Unbelievable. Uh, just, just wonderful. I was at the Musée d'Orsay this time, and also Le Louvre, and, which I've been to, of course, 30 times each, and they never get old. Never. Um, the people need to understand that the Musée d'Orsay now has all of the French Impressionists. Yes. I mean, I'm, I adore Renoir. I, I love all the French Impressionists. And they've got gazillions of them on display, you know? They do. Wonderful. And the Renoir, I always wondered why my French students, because I used to run a program for French college students in this area for a month in the summer, and I always wondered why they weren't impressed when I would take them to the Rodin Museum. Then they took me to the Rodin Museum when I went back to Paris with them. Seriously. Oh, my goodness. It's like four blocks long. It's got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pieces of sculpture. No wonder they weren't impressed with our little teeny, our, our Rodin Museum, by comparison, is like the size of this desk. By comparison, yes, yes right. it is. It's, it's wonderful. And, of course, ours isn't housed in a beautiful Paris mansion either, like theirs is. No, but it's going to be next door to the barns. Very shortly, the barns yeah. is going to open. That's I going to be that. terrific. It will. So tell us about Travel for Teens, how you came up with the idea. You first started it, what, in 2003? I did. And it's right here in Wayne. It's based, right? It is. Um, and it's a perfect segue because Travel for Teens started as Paris for Teens. My husband and I had oh. fallen in love with Paris and going to Paris, and we were hauling our kids to Paris, and uh, I got the idea maybe some other teenagers would like to do this. So we started taking all the friends, and little by little it just grew into a company. And uh, then we expanded beyond Paris, and now we're all over the place. Where else do you take teens besides Paris? We take teens to four continents and 38 countries. Yeah. Okay. Um, and you've been to every place that me you take personally. Your teen? Yeah. No, we have staff who has, but I have okay. not. Okay. We're we're um. What's the weirdest place that you send teens to? Well, I think it depends on what you call weird. Oh. I mean, I think. What's the most unusual? Maybe Thailand, Thailand, Fiji, or South Africa. One of those three. Um, most of our destinations are in Europe. We also do Australia, New Zealand, several countries in Africa, Fiji, Thailand. Mm. 
Yeah. I haven't been to any of those places yet. Yeah. Not yet. It's, it's I going always yet. end up We're in still either, teenagers. I always end up in either Paris or Tunis, you know. We just go back to Paris personally. My husband and I mostly just keep going to Paris. Where do you stay when you go to Paris? We actually own apartments there. Excusez-moi. <laughs> oh, okay. That solves that problem, right? <laughs> well, we rent them, but when we're there and they're not rented, we stay in them. Fantastic. Yes. Yeah. What arrondissement? We have one in the 6th by the Le Jardin de Luxembourg, the Luxembourg Gardens, and nice. one in the 7th, um, very close to the Eiffel Tower. La Tour Eiffel. La Tour Eiffel. The Ooh. Grand Dame. Do you speak French? Um, not as well as you, but I speak it. Oh, you do? Oh. As long as you try to say one phrase in French, the Frenchies are so wonderful. They it are. always galls me when people say, oh, the French are snobby, or they're not friendly, or that is that. And I say, I've had, you know, French people, total strangers, you ask them a question, they'll walk 12 blocks out of their way. To show you. To show you how to yes. get there. I remember years ago, my girlfriend and I, I broke my eyeglasses. And I had I had needed an optician, and I asked this woman who had her teenage daughter with her. She was a secretary, and she had the day off. She spent the whole day with us. She took us to the bank because we needed money first. She took us to the optician. She took us to her favorite restaurant. And for years we corresponded with her. And I'm thinking, I don't think that would happen on Market Street, do you? Oh no. It no. might not even no, happen on Lancaster not. Avenue in Wayne. I don't think so. <laughs> well, you know, one of the things that we try to teach the kids is that. It behooves you to spend a little bit of time understanding what is considered polite and what is considered impolite in your host country. You are the guest there. And I think Americans sometimes have a tendency to think that since we are the consumers of their culture, that other countries owe us to modify themselves to suit us. And that's not the case, and that defeats the purpose of travel. And that makes someone who could be an ambassador for American culture into an ugly American, right? Inadvertently. Inadvertently. Maybe not so inadvertently sometimes. <laughs> Maybe they do it on Maybe purpose. Maybe on purpose. Yeah. yeah. But, they, I mean, you just walk down the street and every little alleyway, uh, every, uh, every street, you find something beautiful to photograph, something to ooh and ah over. You don't even have to go to the major attractions. I mean, the, the French have an art. I mean, just give them a pot and it becomes a garden. It will become beautiful. Yeah. Yes. And when we were there this time, Paris was still decorated for Christmas and the oh. creativity, and it's very simple. It, you look at it and you think, you realize that you could have thought of that, except you didn't. You know, it's just beautiful. The whole city's beautiful. Every corner that you turn, as you say, there's did, something beautiful. Did you get to see any movies where you, when you were there? No. Oh, that's always a treat to go to, uh, to the French to movies. French movies, yeah. Uh, many times I've seen movies that were so spectacular, I brought them back to, for a film festival in nice. Philadelphia. Nice. Yeah. Very interesting. Well, how interesting that a French film won honors the other night. Yeah. Well. It's fantastic. How about the artist also, a silent That movie? is the artist. Yes, with, with the French. the yeah, Fren French movie. They were so cute. He comes up and he says, I am French, so I have to read. And then he pulls it out. <laughs> he, he was adorable. And that dog. The dog. Oh. Jack Russell Terrier. They had Harvey Weinstein and the dog on the Today Show the next morning. Oh, nice. <laughs> and the dog, on command, started barking and talking. Uh, he was just the cutest little thing. He is. Of course, I'm a cat person. But anyway. I am too. <laughs> <laughs> so when do you start signing kids up for the, I assume they're summer tours? They are, yes. Our summer tours are designed in sessions, like sort of like a traditional summer camp. So. A kid who wants to go traveling in the summer can sign up for any of the sessions and as many or as few as budget and desire permit. So we start signing, um, we're signing up kids now, we're right in the thick of it. Oh, already? The first tours okay. leave um, at the end of June, June 26th, I think. And we also do um, private tours, like last year we did a trip for four teenagers, four teenage girls who wanted very specific things, so we assigned staff and we designed their own trip for them. And we also do schools, like if a teacher wants to take a group of students to anywhere the teacher wants to go, we can work with the teacher and do that too. Uh, by now you must have personal contacts, in, especially in Paris, so that if somebody comes to you and says, um, I'm bringing members of my department at such and such a med school and we want to meet with our counterparts over there, are you able to do that for yes. them? Yes. 
in almost all of the places that we go, we could do something like that. Our contacts run very deep, and we're, we're proud of the fact that for most of our trips, the only way you could do some of the things that, are, that we do with the kids on our trips is to go with us. They're unique to us. And we look for more and more and more of those kinds of insider access um, do you ever opportunities. Go, do you ever accompany any of the teen trips yourself? Mm -hmm. What's the funniest thing that ever happened with a teenager on one of your trips? The funniest? I mean, yes. I can certainly very funny things roll right out, right up. I don't know if they're the funniest, but we, uh, we had one young lady who uh, asked our Australian counselor how you say three in Australian. And, <laughs> it, and then she asked what language they speak in Australia. We she had obviously a, had done a lot of research ahead of time. Oh, right? tons, and yes. was well-traveled, too. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's the point, is to, is to <laughs> take kids funny. that otherwise wouldn't know these things and open their eyes to wonders that they may not have <coughs> wondered about before. Well, I had a, a girl a couple of years ago ask me why Spain was in the European Championships. <laughs> and I said, well, they played their way to the top bracket. She goes, wait a minute, is Spain in Europe? Oh, yeah. So they yeah. do. Learn. American kids don't seem to know much about world geography. Um, no, I think you know that's a big ocean between us and the, and the places where we go. And um, so many kids, so many many kids, are friends with me on Facebook and describe their trip as having been life changing. And you know, ask me my opinions about their life and ask me for recommendations. And not just me, but all the counselors. But um, that I think is the most special thing to us is to to see a kid who we think their life really did change forever. Do you have kids that go more than once? Uh, you know, the next summer they also mm -hmm. sign up? We have about 30% of our kids repeat. Wow. Yeah, about 30% of the kids that we take have been with us before, and about half of our kids each <laughs> summer do more than one trip. So trips are two <coughs> weeks long. Oh, it's two weeks, okay. They're two weeks, and they're linked to another two-week session, and the kids can combine any, any trips that they want. Do you limit the poundage that they're allowed to carry with them? We don't limit it, but the airlines do. Because I figure there must be some young ladies who bring everything they own, or they would like to, right? Um, that would be an understatement, yes. <laughs> and we suggest that they bring no more than 32 pounds, and we suggest that they bring one medium-sized suitcase. And many of the emails that we get in May and June reflect how on earth they're going to go anywhere for two weeks with 32 pounds. But it's a great learning experience for them to find out, yes, you can. You know, it's funny. Uh, one time years ago, I arrived in Israel with my husband, but the suitcases were nowhere to be found. Oh, no. Now, when you arrive somewhere and you have nothing except the clothes on your back, and it was freezing cold, we flew out of New York. So I was wearing a wool, you know, pantsuit. And you get to Israel, and it was Hot. like 80 degrees. So I bought a T-shirt and a pair of jeans, toothbrush, <laughs> deodorant, comb and brush. And for four days, that's what I lived in. And when this, the luggage came at 1 o'clock in the morning, four days later, I said, we didn't even need the luggage. I mean, we're doing <laughs> fine without any luggage. So after that, I learned a good lesson because with a pull-on suitcase, I always pack the things that are required, like makeup, of course. Of course. Medicine, medicine. a change of underwear, you know. Or several. A, a sweater, yeah. <laughs> just in case. Just in case. Just in case the luggage doesn't just get there. Just in case. And particularly on our trips that go from place to place, like our Paris trip, they're in Paris, they stay in Paris. Most of our Italy trips, they're only in the same place for a day or two, and then they're moving. Oh. So we have kids that have their luggage chasing them all around Europe. So it's very important <coughs> to put the necessities in a carry-on. Yeah. Uh, what cities do you take them to in Italy? Um, depends on the trip, but we are very heavy in Rome, Florence, Venice, of course. Um, we stay at a wonderful estate outside of Venice in a little town you've never heard of. What's um, it called? The, the place where we stay or the town? The town. The town is called Sinalunga. And You're right, I've never heard of that. <laughs> this, um, this estate where we take them is actually... We went through Bologna. Oh, it was beautiful. We stayed in Venice for two weeks. My husband surprised me a few years ago as a birthday present. And during the Venice Film Festival, he booked us on the side of Venice where no cars are allowed. You go up a little bridge, down a little bridge, walk a few blocks, <laughs> up a little bridge, down a little bridge. And the boat 
takes you wherever you have to go. And those it's little bridges wonderful. start looking a lot alike after a while, don't yeah. they? Oh, yeah, it's easy to get easy lost to get in lost, Venice. Yeah, but it's, it's just, oh, it's a magical There's city. There's nowhere in, on earth like Venice, nowhere. No, and, and it's sinking into the sea as we speak. They're trying to shore it up. I don't know how successful they're going to be, but it is absolutely astonishing. Just gorgeous. I would say that the kids' favorite place that we go in Italy is the region called Cinque Terre. Do you know Cinque Terre? No. It's um, on the Ligurian Sea, which I don't know how they... I don't know where the divisions are between the Mediterranean, the Tyranian, and the Ligurian. It's all the same sea, but it's on the western <coughs> coast, the Italian Riviera, and it's five little villages perched up in the cliffs. They're ancient fish fishing villages, and it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, so it can never change. There will never be a Marriott in Cinque Terre, ah. and the kids absolutely love it. I love it. It's spectacularly beautiful and not so well known in America. I remember my first trip to Europe a hundred years ago, I went to Ez in France, mm -hmm. which is this little medieval oh, town, yes. and you had to climb up this, I mean, it was unbelievable. It's a goat path that you have to yes. climb up to get to Ez. They well, have a boat now, I mean a bus it, now. A, a donkeys could, t could take you <laughs> in those days. But my husband, I was remarried, and my husband, when we went to France one of the first times, he said, I've never been to Ez. I said, oh, I've been. He says, no, no, I really want to go to Ez. I said, well, if I have to. It was totally different. And they were able to, they have like a plateau, and they can drive you up to the plateau. Yes. So you don't have to climb straight up to the sky the yes. way you used to. And when you have dinner at the top of that mountain, looking out over the world, it is just a memorable experience. It's wonderful. Yes, I would say Cinque Terre is very much like Ez. And Except as is as has cars now, and it's as is much bigger than any uh, each of the villages, you know. And it's not a large town as <laughs> no, <laughs> no, not no. A large you can town. pretty much do as in about fifteen minutes if yeah, you want to. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful though, so, and the perfume factories. Now, how do uh, teenagers find out about travel for teens? I would say the two primary ways are either the internet or word of mouth. Really, mm -hmm. you don't advertise anywhere. We do. We do, but the print press is not as kind to us as the internet is, and we um, have a question on our registration form, how did you find out about us? And about 85% of them, it's either word of mouth or the internet, kind of evenly divided. What, a friend sent them a Facebook link or mm -hmm. something? Yes. Isn't that a, now, is there someone in your company who is a guru with the internet that knows how to do Twitter and Facebook and whatever else there is out there. Yes, his name is Johnny Perkins, and we're so glad to have Johnny because if anything technical were left up to me, we'd be in a world of trouble. <laughs> but uh, he, does he, how often does he update your website? Every day. Every day we he updates post, the website. We post Twitter and Facebook every day, sometimes several times a day. And then the website itself, of course, we have a company that actually does it. Are you running for it. office? No, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> because sure. the politicians are doing that now. They're tweeting, they're Facebooking, they're linking in LinkedIn, well, right? Social media, I think, was um, very impressively dominated by Obama in his last campaign. Oh, yes. And I think he, he got a real leg up because he mastered that. Howard Dean started it all. He did? Really, because Howard Dean started the Internet solicitations. Send ah. us $5, send us $10. And the response was overwhelming. But now everybody does it, and they do it all the time, and it gets very annoying, I have to say. You know, on the one hand, especially my party, the Democratic Party, rails against the super PACs and unlimited spending, but they're soliciting every 15 minutes I'm getting a solicitation. So it's sort of like I take it with a grain of salt when they say they're opposed to all this money. But it is obscene, the amount of money politicians have to raise. I mean, when a guy like Huntsman drops out because... It doesn't have enough money. I mean, just look at the Huntsman Building on Penn's campus. You know, Seriously. he's a Wharton graduate. Seriously. I, I mean, gazillions of dollars are required to run for any office. I mean, it's really shocking. Well, far and away, the biggest war chest right now is Obama's. I mean, it's, it's pretty impressive. 68 million already. already. And they didn't start the major fundraising no. yet because we're not even up to primary season yet. Exactly. Wow. And where have anyway. you ever seen primaries where this amount of <coughs> combat is being done this early? It's amazing.
this well, amount of advertising well, and the use of the social media in the primaries. And, and how vicious it is. I mean, so far we've only seen what the Republicans do to each other. Soon we'll start to see what Democrats do <laughs> when there are fights, you know, with other local, state, and federal races. It's true. Although nobody's going to run against Obama. That's a done deal, you know. North Carolina, is it North or South Carolina? I forget where the, where the, the I think it's South Carolina. Where they are now? No, where, the, no, no, where the, um, the Democratic presidential convention, I think it's going to be in North Carolina in, uh, in uh, September. The, uh, the re, national re, convention? The Republicans national convention is in August, and I forget where it is because Quite honestly, I wasn't planning to go. I went when it was in Philly. <laughs> I even volunteered because Ed Rendell, the mayor, asked one of my, you know, organizations, the Philadelphia Public Relations Association, to do some pro bono work for six months. So we did. So that's how I got to meet a lot of Republicans. Nice. They, they were nice people. They didn't have horns. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you were surprised. <laughs> I might have been. <laughs> anyway, what are the national associations that Travel for Team belongs to? There are no national, national associations nor any certification process whatsoever you're, for the teen travel industry. You're kidding. No. Because I know, you know, I went to summer camp in the Poconos my whole life, and there was a, a national camping, camping association. association and state and regional. Yes. And there's nothing for tra travel programs? Yes, no, nothing. Why don't you start one, Pat? You're very good at starting businesses. <laughs> Maybe I will. You started the Black Hat Cafe, right? I did. And you could tell us, we may as well put in a plug for that. We got a couple minutes. The Black Hat Cafe? Yeah. It's a cafe on um, Berkeley Road in Devon, just up from Whole Foods. And we have very, very good food. And all of our proceeds go to save animals. 100% of the proceeds are donated to Animal Rescue. The name of that is PALS. What does the PALS stand for? The Pet Adoption and Life Care Society. Okay. And uh, we are Cat Rescue. We have a partner rescue that rescues dogs. That's called All Four Paws, the number four. Oh, is that cute? Yeah. Uh, all Four They do paws. a great job, wonderful job. Maybe 25, 30 dogs a week, which is a huge volume in dog rescue. It's a huge volume even in cat rescue. For those of us who love our pets, every time there's a horror story mm. in the news about somebody who who butchered animals or starves them, starves them yeah. or mistreats them in some way. just hurts your heart so because you get so much love. I mean, our little cat, we lost one of our cats. Oh. Yeah, he had a, a, some kind of carcinoma oh, no. of the mouth. It was, oh, it was awful. We lived to be 16, which is young for our cats. They usually, you know, we usually get them to to hang around till they're 18 or 19. 16 is a good so, run, and yeah. mouth carcinomas are very aggressive cancers. There's yeah, nothing you can do. Oh, and I consulted with a friend who's at Penn Veterinary, the Bryn Mawr yeah. Veterinary. He diagnosed it immediately. Sure. He was wonderful. Sure. But there was, you know, he tried surgery, but there was nothing that could be no, done. not really. But the, but the brother, Smokey, who never meowed in 16 years, Tigger, the one that we lost, he meow, 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 all day, all the time, always talking. And the other one, very loving, purred like crazy, never made a meow. Since he lost his brother, he meows all the time. He found his voice. I think he's calling for his brother. Yeah, they get lonely. They get lonely. They time miss for each another other. cat, Bonnie. Uh, Give me a know, call. I thought about that, but I said, I, this, you know, Smokey was always, if you dropped a piece of paper, he would jump six feet in the air. I mm. mean, he's that kind of spooky, high strung, nervous, you know, little cat. But such a love bunny. And it's not enough that he sleeps in bed with me. He has to lie on top of me. I mean, you know, if he lies on my chest or my stomach, it's a little uncomfortable. If I turn on my side, he ranges himself from my shoulder down to my elbow. <laughs> he loves you. Yeah. yeah. I'm his mom. You're a safety blanket. Oh, a sweet, sweet little boy. Well, you so know, I think, love. I think what you say is true, that there are very, very sad stories out there. I mean, my email is full of them every day, believe me. But one of the things that I think is important to remember if you're going to be involved in animal rescue is the balance of the wonderful people that are out there. And they are. It's easy to forget about them because you're so focused on the horrors. Yeah. But we had a, a little cat come in, and the cat had been hit by a car. And she had some very serious injuries and required Ooh. three surgeries, um, very highly specialized surgeries. And there's no way we had the money. And even though the vet hospital 
it, it's the Veterinary Specialty Center up in Fraser. And they're very good, and they're very, very expensive. And they were working with us. We just didn't have the money. And I put out an email to the PALS mailing list, and the thing went viral. It ended up on NBC, and I literally could not answer the emails fast enough. And the money came in, I would say, within four days, and that little cat is saved. You wouldn't believe it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, she had Gives half her, her pelvis her removed on both sides, both sides. And cats can get muscle and, and fiber tissue to compensate for the lack of bone. And she's just walking around like a normal cat now. It's amazing. She doesn't know she's not supposed to be walking. She has no idea. <laughs> and, you know, just that kind of outpouring from perfect, isn't total that, strangers. Isn't that wonderful? And the emails would come <coughs> in titled, I'm contributing, please don't euthanize Ruby. You know, and I get emails almost every day now from people, how's Ruby, how's Ruby, how's Ruby. So there are good people, too. With whom does Ruby live now? She's at my house right now, of oh, course, but she will be available <laughs> for adoption in two weeks. She is a purebred Maine Coon, we think, and she is absolutely stunning. So if anybody out there would like to adopt Ruby, she'll be looking for a new home soon. Okay, so they would access what, uh, what link? Website. What website? palspets.org. P-A-L-S-P-E-T-S. -E yes. Dot org. Mm -hmm. Plural, plural. But if they're focusing on their kid and they want a terrific experience in the summertime. That's travelforteens.com. Travelforteens.com. Um, are, are, are the prices, do they vary? It depends if you they do stay vary. in a, a, in a four-star hotel or a, or a hostel or it a tent. It depends on the length of the trip and where you're traveling. Our trips to the Dominican Republic, to South America, and to Costa Rica are much less money, both for an airfare, which is not included in tuition, and in tuition, because our costs are less. Paris is an expensive trip. A combination of London and Paris is a very, very expensive trip. So those trips cost more. Uh, does Kate Middleton come and say hello to she your does. kids? Yes, she does. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> she does a private fashion show. No. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice if you could arrange that? It would. That? Yeah, talk about insider access. Do you ever get, you know, uh, public officials to come greet your kids? Yes. Um, we have a community service trip, for example, to Cinque Terre, I was telling you. And the kids in Italy? actually... Mm -hmm, in Italy. And there is a network of hiking trails there, and our kids go there every year and work on the trails because the world enjoys those trails. And they make such a fuss. The mayor comes. They have a big reception for our kids. The Italian press comes. They're all on TV. They're all interviewed. Oh, that's wonderful. They give them gifts. It's a really big deal. Yeah, so we do arrange that in some other countries, too. Do you give the in kids Fiji, the chiefs come and welcome them, chiefs of the tribes that we work with. In Italy, do you give the kids a little phrase book yes. before they go? Well, we don't give it to them, but we tell them to get it and bring it. Okay. Yeah. And, do you and we like them to learn some Italian. I mean, the purpose of that particular trip is not to learn Italian, but you should be learning the language, some language, anywhere you travel. Of course you should. Very important phrase to know when you're going to Italy. Gelato cioccolata chocolate ice cream. <laughs> that I learned right away. <laughs> you can say that in how many languages? Yes, now, many <laughs> languages, yes. For, oh, but, but the chocolate ice cream in Rome, the only place in America that I ever had ice cream that was as fudgy and fabulous as I got in Rome is at Du Jour in Haverford. Really? They have a dark chocolate ice cream that is to die for. It is out of this world. But I learned that I only need to order one scoop. They used to give you two scoops. And you so just, rich. it was overwhelming. It's like Bertillon. What's Bertillon? Bertillon, the ice cream in Paris. Ah. Mm. Little tiny bowl, little tiny balls, oh, but oh my goodness. Very rich. Yeah, yeah, very rich. Well, I think we're running out of time, Pat, or oh, I could talk to you all day. I know, Bonnie. Me and um, soyez le bienvenue. Welcome back to Merci, Wayne. Merci, madame. And our guest has been Pat Maloney, who is the founder and the brains behind travel for teens, and if you want an extraordinary experience for your teenager, you look her up. Anyway, yes, and your, your audience is welcome to just come and visit our offices anytime. Drop We're in. right in Wayne. They're right in Wayne. We'll see you next week. Goodbye.